Hey guys, Zane Hansen here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a hidden kill switch on your motorcycle. The point of the switch is to prevent people from being able to steal the bike. So they can try hotwire it, they can try push start it, or even if they have the keys, it still won't be able to start because when the switch is flipped off, there's just no way that power will get through the bike. Uh, the only thing they would be able to do is tow it or walk away with it, but you should have a chain and a disc lock to prevent that. Uh, the best part about it is that it's very cheap. Like I just went down to my local J car here in New Zealand and got a basic switch, some wires, some spade connectors, and I already had a wire stripper at home. Uh, that's pretty much all you need. I'm doing this because here in New Zealand and probably everywhere, bikes get stolen all the time, including my last one. Uh, my last one was a Suzuki DRZ400 Supermoto, and it was my dream bike. I saved up for ages to get this thing, and then one month after I got it, it was stolen while I was in class at university. So hopefully this video helps others protect their pride and joy. It's a very simple and easy process. So this switch here is the one I'm going to be using. It's just a basic cheap switch that I got from my local electrical store, JCar. Um, I'm going to be using these spade connectors to join to the switch and also between the wires. I've taken the plastic off because I think they're easy to work with. Um, here's the street heat shrink, which I'm going to be covering the joins with. It's not necessary, but I prefer to use it. Um, this GN250 is actually the bike I'm going to be doing it on today. And underneath the side cover here is where my battery and power fuse are. Personally, I'm going to be putting it into this in line with this fuse here where I've already cut the wires because when this fuse is blown, no power runs through the bike. So when the switch is off, no power will go through. Um, I've already cut the wires here, like I said, and I'm just going to run new wires from these wires to the switch wherever, wherever I've hidden it. And by the way, always remember to disconnect your battery before you work with this stuff. Here's two spade connectors that I'll be using to join wires together. It just keeps it nice and simple, just a male and female spade connector right into each other. Um, here's some wire which I'm going to be using to go to the switch. It's pretty much the same as the wire that's already there. And on different bikes, there's different places you can wire the switch into. One would be the kill switch like I just pressed. Um, there's also a switch underneath your kickstand for when the kickstart's down the the kickstand's down, the bike won't run. You could wire it into the switch as well, that would work. You know, I would suggest just Googling your bike, going on some forums, and you'll be able to find people that have already done it. So first I'll be stripping the ends of the wires, just to, you know, expose the wire. So I just use my wire strippers, find the right gauge hole, and uh, twist them around until the end's loose, and then you can just slide it right off. It's real easy. Once that's done, I get my heat shrink and I slide this on now for later. Now, don't forget to slide it on, it's a real pain later if you didn't. Uh, here is my spade connector that just slides right on and then all I have to do is crimp it on. There are special crimping tools, but I'm just going to be using the pliers at the end of my wire strippers because it works fine and it's easy. All you have to do is just press it in like this until it's nice and snug on the wire. Now normally that's all you would have to do and you don't even need that heat shrink wrap that I put on there to be honest. You could just use the normal plastic spade connector thing but um, I just like doing it like this. Now I'm also going to be putting a small amount of solder onto there just to hold it on nice and tight but that is not necessary. Normally you wouldn't do that. Uh, I'll show you how I did that anyway. So here's my soldering iron. First I tried uh, getting the spade connector hot enough for the solder to melt onto it. But this, like I spent ages trying to do it and it just wouldn't get it hot enough. So I gave up and eventually I started melting the solder straight onto the spade connector as you'll see in a second. So now that there's some solder on there, I'm just I just know it won't be able to come off later the connection, but it's not necessary. Um, now that it's on there though, I can plug it onto the switch. Should be a nice snug fit because I have the right size spade connector. And then I'm going to be sliding the uh, heat shrink up from earlier. Just plug it in first.
Here's my heat shrink from earlier that I slid on. I'm just gonna slide it over the thing because I want to, you don't have to, but it just makes it nice. And um, all I'm going to use to shrink it is, I don't have a heat gun, so I'm just using this lighter here. And it works fine as long as you don't burn the actual like heat shrink. As you can see it, you know, I just sort of wave it around close enough that it heats it up to shrink down. Okay, now that's all done, I'm basically going to repeat the same thing with the other wire to go on the other side of the switch. So now I've done that as well. Um, this switch is now ready to go onto the motorbike. So I'm just going to hide it somewhere and not tell you guys in case someone watches this video and knows my bike is fine though. The kill switch is now hidden in my bike. I'm not going to tell you where, but you can get creative with this. Uh, the top right wire comes from the switch. That's one of the wires it connects to the original fuse wire down the bottom. The other original fuse wires on the left there, I have rerouted it underneath the seat to connect with the other side of the switch, like the other switch wire. I hope that's not too confusing, but I'll, um, I'll show you in a second here. Uh, first, I'll show you, so these two wires on the right, they'll connect up. I will be using spade connectors to do this. You could solder it, but I'm just going to, I just think it's easy to use spade connectors, so that's fine. And then on the left side here, we have the other original wire which was connected there, but I'm going to run this up the left to the very top left. That is the other wire coming from the switch. So once these two are connected, the circuit will be complete and my head and kill switch should be working. Um, here's two spade connectors. That is just, I'm just going to use them for all the joins. It works fine, it's easy. I can unplug it if I really want, but I will be putting heat shrink on just to protect it and um, I'll use my lighter again to do that. So now it's all finished. As you can see, here's one of my joins here that goes from the fuse there to the switch. On the left side, we have the other wire that was on the fuse that runs under the seat to the other side of the switch. So they both go to the switch and my, my head and kill switch should be working now. So right now the switch is off, which means the bike shouldn't work. And as you can see, it's not starting. So that's a good sign. Now I will flip the hidden kill switch and let's see if the bike works as it should. Hopefully it does. I'm just finding it at the moment. All right, now it's flipped. So turn the key, the lights come on and it should start. There we go, works perfectly. Um, now hopefully no one steals my bike. Anyway, I'll put it back together now and hopefully this can help some people watching. You just have to look online where you want to wire it in, but it's not that hard. And I will be doing this on my other bike soon, it's just over here. It is a Suzuki Bandit 600 and I don't want that to get stolen either. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, stay tuned, I'll be uploading more bike videos, car videos, four wheel drive videos hopefully soon, and uh, thank you. Oh, and also, if you guys love me as much as I love you for watching this far in the video, Please like and subscribe, that helps me so much. And I promise, I promise you, I will upload some good content. It will be coming soon. I will try my absolute best and I'll make sure you guys love it. Thanks again, I'll see you later.